welcome to my channel, Danny Grace Daily. Today I am sharing with you my themed learning shelves for my preschooler and toddler. I have three children. Right now they are five, three, and one year old. And for the past few years, I have been setting up these themed shelves to just teach them some basic like preschool level concepts. What we do is we choose a theme that we're interested in at the moment. So we've done a few in the past. I'm gonna share some photos of what we've done over the last few years just to give you some ideas. So let me just show you what we include on our shelves. It is so open-ended and you can really do whatever you want. There are so many different ways to homeschool or to um, teach your children or play with your children. We found that this is what worked for our family, so I just want to share it with you in case it can give you some ideas for what you can do with your own children. Now, I did send my children to preschool, so this was more of like a supplemental thing that we would do at home because preschool where we currently live is only two and a half hours a day three times a week where we used to live it was full day preschool for my son because he had speech therapy but it doesn't really matter because it just is something extra to do to do in those hours when we're at home and we're at home a lot now especially and so having themed based play activities are wonderful for that age group for preschoolers toddlers even kindergarten and elementary students like a lot of these activities that we have can also be adapted to the older age range my son is going into kindergarten this year he's a little bit behind with his letters and his numbers he does have a speech delay he was in speech therapy for the last three years um, since he was two years old he had tubes put in his ears from frequent ear infections but the tubes kept coming out and so he's actually had tubes put in his ears four times which is crazy and they told us that he would probably be a little bit delayed learning his numbers letters and reading and he is he's a little behind but with that my three-year-old is a little bit ahead because he's been involved with everything that we've done with my five-year-old and so he knows his alphabet and his numbers better than my five-year-old at this point. So they're kind of on the same level going forward. This still works for both of them, learning their numbers, letters, shapes, colors. They know their colors and other shapes, but if your children don't, and my daughter doesn't yet, she's only one, this will work great for you too. Today's video is a big collab with seven of my girlfriends. We are bringing to you one full week of back to school prep and planning. So whether you're homeschooling or heading back to the classroom, we have ideas, hauls, hacks, room tours, and routines to inspire and help you plan for the school year ahead. I'm going to be linking everybody's video down below in the description box so you can go check them out and find some inspiring new mamas to follow as we head into this new school year. I hope you enjoy. The first First thing I'm going to show you is this morning basket. Now you may have heard of this concept before. It is basically just a basket of things that you want to do with your child first thing in the morning. It's as simple as it sounds really. Um, a lot of times people choose to do something that might be just something beautiful to bring goodness into their day like poetry, art, bible, or a nice story. So. What we do in the mornings, we always read a poem. Now, I love this book. So what I do during whatever theme we're working on is I go and I look for something that I can find that matches with our unit or the season or the holiday. For example, for this unit, we found this woodpecker poem. And so in the mornings, we would find page 25 and we would read this sweet little woodpecker poem aloud. And there's pictures with every poem. Um, so we always start with a poem. Then we read one chapter or story in this Jesus Storybook Bible book. We have not been wonderful about introducing our children to religion. I try and just um, talk about God, talk about Jesus, and just read a story every now and again. This one is really age appropriate for them and I just I really enjoy just reading these short quick little stories to them that really just kind of resonate with them because they're very simple and I do this during breakfast so they're sitting there eating and I'm just reading something that's just nice and beautiful out loud. And then the last thing that we do in our morning baskets are just read a book that tends to go with our theme. So this is one of my son Troy's favorites. He's my three-year-old. He loves Little Owl's Night, which I also have. And this is Little Owl's Day. So this week we read this one in the morning at the breakfast table. Just one of those sweet 
little themed books that we just tend to like. Another activity that we do in the mornings are these song sticks. So the boys will choose one of these sticks and they have different songs on them that I have just written out, just based on like, just like little kids songs, like preschool themed songs, and also some songs that maybe I want them to know. I have so many. You don't need to do this many if you do go this method, but um, I did some of their favorite Disney songs. I do have holiday ones, counting songs, just, you know, really like favorite family songs. We haven't even gone through all of these, but um, we just have a lot of fun with it. One of the first things I do when we come up with our themes is decorate the shelves. So I make it, I go all out basically. I make it all uh, books, toys, and activities that go along with the theme that we've chosen. So as you can see, our current theme right now is birds. We did this because we have a beautiful, let me see if I can show you. Beautiful backyard and there are so many birds out here in these trees and we just really love to Look at them and learn about them. So I have some books This is more of an adult book for me to read for activity ideas for the kids and then just little bird figurines that we've had We have so many little animal figures. So I always just put those out these I generally keep out here because it's just like our school themed shelf Again, we call it our learning shelf. And this plant is always over here, but this is called a bird's nest fern, which I just think is ironic that it does go with my theme. So of course I'm loving that. Then I have different books that also go with the theme. I usually purchase my books on Amazon, but you could absolutely go to the library and get library themed books. I also have different learning levels. So some more basic picture books like this, and then some that are a little bit more in depth like this one. Now, when I was a kid, I used to have these books, and so I, I wanted it for my kids so bad. They're these ones with like the clear transparencies that go over the page. Does anyone else remember having these as a child? They're so cool. That's one of the reasons that I love doing these themed learning shelves because anything that I purchase or add to, I'm gonna be using year after year with all three of my children. And even as they get older, I can add to it. So I can, you know, make it, make it a little bit more tailored to their grade level. Here we have some sticker books, a bird guide. My kids love these National Geographic books. They just like to look at the pictures and sometimes they'll ask me to read pages to them. Other times it's more of just a visual thing. I did buy them these bird journal notebooks this time. And then of course I got two birds coloring books. I also snuck in a coloring book for myself. Beautiful birds coloring book. It's an adult coloring book. Anytime I find something out that has to do with like a theme that I know we might be doing in the future, I pick it up. This I think was from Target maybe, Target or Michaels, um, and it was just this cute little ring of bird flashcards and facts. So I just picked that up. Binoculars for bird watching. The boys love binoculars. We actually have two of this kind. This is from a Happy Meal. I don't know where the other one is right now, so I just grabbed this to show you. It can literally be anything. Does anybody remember these things as a kid too? The bird just balances on your finger. The kids think that is just so cool. And I used to love that when I was younger too. Another thing from my childhood, as you can see, I have a little bit of theme here. Um, Beanie Babies. Does anybody remember the Thai Beanie Babies? I feel like if you're from my generation, you probably had a lot of these as a child. I just give these to Everly to play with, my one-year-old, just so she has something to do with us, so she feels involved. And the boys love these. They'll just throw them around, they'll play with them. Sometimes they'll come to me, they'll just pick one up and they'll say, Mommy, what kind of bird is this? And I can tell them, oh, well, that's a blue jay, and then we'll look it up in our book. Just to quickly break it down, as to what types of activities we put in these cubbies. Um, we have their individual little bins with their notebooks. We have themed books. We have crayons, markers, paint pens, and coloring. We have some logic games over here, some sensory bin activities over here, matching cards and sorting games over here, and some arts and crafts. So I'll start over here have individual bins for both of my boys. Um, they both have a marker box or pencil box. Right now they're into markers. 
So they both have one of these with the same thing in it. They both have a notebook that I write their name on and they love to have notebooks because they can add their stickers in it that they get from random things, the doctor's offices, dentist appointments, coloring books. They do what they want. Sometimes they ask me to draw in here for them, but um, they also draw in their books. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that my, my son Troy is quite the artist. Let me see if he's got anything in his. Okay, so there's one of our Troy boys drawings. <laughs> it does have some fun things in there. Okay, um, aside from having their own notebook and markers, I also keep one of these dry erase boards. And I wrote their name in permanent marker so that they can practice writing it, another younger activity. And they each have their own dry erase marker and eraser. And then I think it was Target, probably, I got these maybe two years ago. Yep, Target dollar spot. Two years ago, I wrote their names on them in Sharpie, and whenever they go to write their name on a paper or sign someone's card, they always come and grab these, and they hold it up, and then they can copy it and write their name. So they've come in very useful, and I love them. If anyone sees these at Target again, let me know. I would love to get another one for my daughter, Everly. Even though she's too young right now, I would just like her to have one for the future. This little cubby is where we keep some of our themed books for the unit. Uh, this one is Troy's favorite. He loves Little Owls Night. We also have the companion Little Owls 1, 2, 3. Again, it also has the Little Owls Day. We have Eric Carl's 10 Little Rubber Ducks. And then just some different books that go with our unit theme, whatever we're, we're learning at the time. Then we always have some type of like reference book. This one is the ultimate guide to the birds of North America. This was actually one of my father's books. This was also one of my father's books. This one's pretty cool. Bird songs of North American birds. And it plays the sound of the bird. So this is such a cool book. Then I always keep like reference books like this for the basic skills that they're learning at this time. So for preschool, it would be ABCs numbers, and shapes. They both know all their shapes, but we're working on letters and numbers. And this one's just a cute one. It's my very busy day, or my busy day. That one's cute too. All right, so that's book cubby. This is where we keep some of our markers and paint pens. These are those do -a dot paint pens. The boys love these. We also keep some markers in here and some crayons. And these are the like baby type of crayons that I have in here for Ev or for like a young toddler if they're learning how to color. I put like themed coloring book or coloring pages in there and the boys will sometimes just go to town and have fun with them. I love these giant ones. These are from Melissa and Doug. I just buy like the big animal pad and then I take out the ones that go with our theme. So. My mom also loves to color. She did this one with the boys. She's so cute. So, something like this. We just happened to have a bunch of these rubber duckies from a preschool unit we did a while ago. We like to play hide and seek with these. So, my mom came up with this idea. She would just go hide these all around the room. And then the boys would come out with these little grocery baskets that they have. I think these are just a Hobby Lobby or a craft store. And they would go around the room looking for them. And whoever would find the most would win. And they, they love this game. They think it's so much fun. And whatever our theme is, we always like play something like this. So, we have dinosaurs. We have duckies. We have little like superheroes. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever you have that you want to play hide and seek with. It's just, it's something fun to do with your kids. I have these bins with lids on them because I don't want my daughter to be able to get into them. Um, this is just a simple matching game. Now I get all my printables online. There's a website called Teachers Pay Teachers where you can purchase downloads and just print them off. Etsy has tons as well. And then so does, oh, Pinterest. You can just find so many activities on Pinterest. So this is just a very simple matching game where they have to put all the cardinals on this one. And some of them are a little harder to differentiate. And then over here, they put the bluebirds. So you know, very simple. 
and just something fun that they could do. Here we have some sensory activities. So this one is just feathers. Um, it's fun though because some of them are multiples of each feather so they can match. Others, it's just identifying colors. The boys have moved past this at this point, but if your child's learning colors, this is a fun way to like let them touch something, feel something, and kind of learn about different textures and shapes and you know where do feathers come from. My boys added this feather um, on their own. This is from a wild turkey in our backyard. So they've been adding to it themselves, but you know, you could very easily like do like a matching game, like match the feathers or um, put them in rainbow order or just identifying the color. So there's so many different things you can do with these types of sensory activities. This one's fun. So this is a sensory bin. I make these for all of our different theme units. I just get ideas on Pinterest. I go to craft stores. This one is really just about textures and counting. So I found these cute little birdies at a craft store. Let's see. They're just fun to play with. They can count them. They can put them in the nest. There's two different nests. Same with these little eggs. Play them, count them touch things. There's just very soft feathers. There's these like gummy type worms. They're fun to play with in their little fingers. Um, this, you know, like almost like prickly owl. Um, and then these little containers like this that they can just like dump things into or take it out of or stuff feathers and worms in there. I don't know. You know how kids are. They just have fun with this stuff. And it is kind of a learning experience because you can make it like counting organizing, sorting, not organizing, that's a mom thing. They can sort, they can sort all the birds together. If everything's like scattered in here, they can sort all the eggs together. They can put, you know, three eggs in this basket and two birds in this basket and just kind of open-ended. But also it's something I can just give them to sit there and play with on their own if I want to start making dinner or something like that. So sensory bins are the way to go with younger kids. They just love them just a big old toy because why not and then I have different matching games and things in here so let me show you these are some more flashcard type things that I have printed out laminated and just put on a little metal ring the kids seem to love these things so they just have all different birds and their different illustrations so like sometimes they'll take these and they'll match them to their beanie babies or they'll match them to a bird in their bird book or they'll look outside and be like, mommy, look, it's this bird, it's this bird, what is that? And you know, you can do this with any theme at all, but right now, it just so happens to be birds. These are these like Montessori style cards. Um, I was going to decorate the shelves with these, but I never did. But these are real photos of birds. So I like to have, you know, different types of visuals for them to look at and learn from. So they've got, you know, the illustrated version of this, and then they've got, the real version of this and you know here's another idea they could do a matching game with those so there's just so many things to do with this age group I love it this is more of a basic game don't mind my baggies I probably could get a nicer system but this is what works so this is like a shadow matching game where they just have to match these illustrated birds to their shadow. And then this is probably my favorite. So you know those little, um, they're called tubes, T-O-O-B-S, safari tubes of animals. Um, they're like in the toy aisle at craft stores and they come with some type of theme animal or character in these little like long skinny tubes of toys. So I like to get them whenever I can, and then I search either on Pinterest or Etsy or Teachers Pay Teachers to find the matching cards. And a lot of them, a lot of times you can find cards that look very, very similar to the items in the tube, and sometimes they are even created for the tube, which is really cool. For example, so they will match the bird to the card and this is one of their absolute favorite activities and I love it too because it's just fun. I mean, look how similar some of these look to their pictures. It's so cool, this one too. Now, I will tell you that I keep these organized and separated away from their toys. So these are not allowed in the playroom in our house. Like anything that is a tube toy, 
they're not allowed to take into the playroom with them because I don't want them to get lost because for us, this is strictly like an educational learning activity. And you know, my kids have tons of little animals and figures like this and they would just get lost in their playroom in like five seconds. So any type of these animals that we buy, because they are relatively expensive, I put in these little bins, I label them, and I keep it in this larger like Tupperware type container. So they're all sorted in there. I think that these are for photo storage. Last cubby over here. Whenever I can find a game that goes with our theme, I try and pick it up, especially if it's something that they can um, use after the theme is over. It comes with this little log that the owls will sit on and they stack them up. There are all different activities that you can do with it. It comes with cards. This brand, this learning resources company, is really good. They have lots of educational games. Oh, and they just snap together like this, so that's fun for the kids too. And then I always try and include some type of art or craft. Paint your own birdhouse. We haven't done it yet. And then these are just little birdhouses that I picked up at the craft store and little wooden birds. And this is just for them to have some fun painting with paintbrushes. In these little folders, they each have their own workbooks and activities of things that I'm trying to teach them through the theme. So for example, it's all bird themed and I'm gonna have them write their name at the top of this when they do it. But this is what it has, tracing, math, handwriting, coloring and cutting and more. So these are the types of activities that I want the boys to be working on while they're playing. Trace the feather, to write the letter B, to see these different, um, do these different fine water skills, cutting practice, bird coloring, things like that. And they're all very basic, but it's what they need at this age and it's fun. And so they each have their own little folder they can work on together. Um, this unit is from Home CEO Academy. They have a whole preschool unit. I think they also have kindergarten units. I purchased this. You can also get free printables on Pinterest. The kids love it. I love it. I love themed things. And we have a lot of fun playing together with a purpose. Because a lot of times I'll just let them go off and play. And I don't really, like, they're not really learning anything. They're just playing, which is also really good for them. But at the same time, if you can play and learn for a little part of the day at least together, it's just, it's beneficial for everyone, for them, for us, and for all of our mental health and our brains. So we have a lot of fun doing these units. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you found it helpful and that it gave you some ideas for you to do with your own children in the upcoming school year. Whether you're using it as just supplemental play to fill up your days or using it as a type of preschool curriculum for your young children or toddlers or even kindergartners like I have. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments. I love to know what's working, what's not working, what I should share more of on my channel. Um, I am still really new to YouTube and I want to make content that is helpful and is inspiring and gives you ideas. I also want to thank the girls that I did the collab with today. They are so awesome. They have all created wonderful videos with back to school content for both homeschooling and if you're sending your children back to the classroom. So I will link all of their videos in the description box below. I hope the rest of the week is wonderful for you and that you're all staying safe and healthy. I will see you all in my next video. Thank you and goodbye.